hello, hello. Good to see you guys. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I wanted to jump on. I haven't been on since last week, so I had some time and chat with you guys and answer your questions. Uh, I did a Periscope last week on the fivefold uh, gifts and got a lot of feedback uh, from that. Yay, I am so excited. Online Singles Conference. Excited to teach uh, on the... This Saturday, I'm teaching on the science of attraction. And I was putting together my presentation. I, I just was so excited because I learned this stuff in grad school, but just re-studying it and just amazing. So if you're a single looking at it all over, it's been a person and you have not registered for the online singles conference go to my website askdrfaith.com under courses click on that and register it's going to be such a blessing so i'm going to be talking about how people are attracted to one another so i'm going to talk about things like biology the different uh, i mean i'm going to talk about uh, it's just amazing i don't even want to go too much into it i'm going to talk about um com uh, compatibility i'm going to talk about the holy spirit's role in bringing people together so it's going to be amazing for the single people all right i have some free stuff coming up so my mother is actually teaching um we have a free webinar my mother course on fasting and prayer and we she was with me this weekend we had really wanted to periscope together because she's a phenomenal teacher but um we just did not have the time to do it but what we've decided we're going to do is we're going to open it up the first one to the public we know some people have already registered for this course you guys are going to get an extra gift we're going to be emailing you about that but the first course this thursday night at 8 30 p.m central via webinar now it's, this is a three-week course is going to be open to the public the other two courses you're going to have to sign up for. But we have realized that a lot of people do not understand how to fast properly. They do not understand what they're supposed to be doing during a fast. And our church is on a fast. And our right now. But the webinar, you have to go to ministries on a fast. Um, go to my um, website, AskDrFaith.com, and just subscribe where it says sign up for a mailing list. Subscribe, and we'll send out the information for it. There's no particular form or anything like that. Just simply subscribe. Open it up to the public so we can teach you guys. The first one on Thursday, we're going to some of the basics when it comes to fasting when it comes to prayer and the next tuesday night i'm gonna have a free webinar for people who want to launch their own businesses their own ministries their own coaching com companies their own you guys basic steps of launching log sites and i'm gonna teach you uh, your own thing. Actually, the name of the webinar is How to Start Your Own Thing. Um, so that's going to be on Tuesday. And it's the same thing if you subscribe. And then for that one, I may have a, uh, we'll probably put up a link where you can sign up. But if you have simply, you have simply subscribed to my mailing list on at AskDrFaith.com, you will get all this information for the free courses and all that. All right, let's jump into what I am supposed to be periscoping about today. Um, all the information, uh, I'll, I'll touch on that at the end. Um, so just as a summary, we talked about this um, last week. We were talking about how God has put different gifts in every single person in the earth. If you are uh, a believer, those gifts begin to be magnified. Those big, those gifts begin to be intensified. And this is the thing. There's a... Uh, the Lord gives them to you so that you can give the, your gifts and your talents... The them back to him once you submit your gifts and your talents back to him then what you begin to see is that they begin to uh, uh exponentially and talents but you haven't submitted grow so some of you guys have gifts 
presented them to the Lord and you're not yielding any fruit out of those talents. I was coaching someone this morning, brilliant business girl. She's an entrepreneur. Uh, but the only problem is I asked her, why do you start all these businesses? Why do you want to make money? And I'll teach on this next week. And, you know, she had good reasons, but none of it was it to increase the kingdom of God. When he gives you wisdom, what? none of it was really to be a blessing to other people. And I was telling her that scripture clearly tells us that when we seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then everything else is added on. When he gives you talents, once you have, so when God gives you spiritual gifts, taken those and you submit them back to the Lord, then you're saying, God, I give you access to everything that I'm trying to do and everything I'm trying to build. Therefore, he can multiply it. It is impossible on something and it does not grow possible for God's hand to be on it is impossible for God's hand to be on something and it doesn't grow because the nature of God is growth the nature of God is multiplication the nature of God is um is grow is, is to grow bigger than than where of what we're seeing your giftings if you're, you start out at and so part of or prophetic, if you pray, if you sing, until you have fully submitted them to the Holy Spirit, until you have taken time to develop them. And part of trainings, and um, we released the flyer for the School of the Prophets that I'm doing in August. I'm doing a three days for people that have a prophetic gift and are called in the intensive training for office of a prophet. Registration is going to start in May, but why I'm sharing this is when you have a gift of any sort, you've got to sharpen it. You've got to sharpen it. It is not going to grow. What the Lord sees is that this person is really serious about this thing that I've put in them and by them investing in praying, developing a lifestyle of prayer, reading books, by them getting around people that can help them grow, by them Prayer, he magnifies it. People say, "Oh, why does that person prophesy better than this other person? Or why that is that person, you know, stronger in this area than the other person?" They have submitted themselves to the process of being trained, of being developed, of being matured. Okay, so we all have those fivefold, and we talked about this last gifts. It's the same thing with the time that the fivefold gifts are the actual people so when you begin to say you know what someone says and train myself you the only you cannot train yourself but the holy spirit can train you so you're gonna have seasons where have seasons where you have people train you god trains you and then you're gonna have that's the only way you're going to grow in your gifts. Either by the Holy Spirit. Um, okay, you meant by seeking. Good. Either by the Holy Spirit or by community. That's how we grow. So once we realize we have a particular calling, either as a teacher. And my mom, who's a teacher who's going to teach the free webinar, shared this verse. In, uh, oh gosh, is it Timothy or just with me yesterday? And I remembered... James, it talks about how treat, uh, teachers are going to be judged harshly about what they teach. You know, some people think, oh, the teaching office, it's not very highlighted. We're always talking about apostles and prophets, but teachers, because our job is to explain doctrine, James, thank you. And our job is to bring clarity. We cannot just say, oh, I got something to say. You know, I, give, me a, give me the mic. I got a word or I want to teach, but you have not really spent time developing yourself in that. Good. Your mentor is Mama Joyce. program which will open up good 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 she is full of the word that's one of our our mentors in our men again in in june um after we train all our coaches and mentors who are going through our certification program so when you have a particular calling and assignment the first thing that any prophetic words because some of y'all were asking you know somebody told me i was a prophet somebody Get into a place of training. Said I was an apostle. Somebody said I was this. Get into a place of prayer and submit yourself in that. And we have to view this from a holy, reverent perspective. Saying yes to walking out the assignment of God in our life should be a holy thing. It should be a sobering.
If you feel a call to build people on thing, it shouldn't be just like, oh girl, yeah, this is what I'm doing. No, there should be a sense of holiness. Up, to expand the kingdom of God. This is this should not be just, oh, uh, this is how I'm going to make money. I died. I, I, I was so surprised when we told some friends and they're from a... that because it's a good way to make money a different country we told them that we were getting ready to start a church and they were like oh yeah we have lots of friends who've done i was like what people start churches to make money like that I've, I've never heard of that because it is one a sobering thing so any area <laughs> i know I'm, I'm surprised and these are the people that um you know start these Money and all this, they're not even called like churches and they rob people of their money. Like you've got to be called to this thing. And when the Lord calls you, you've got to humble yourself to the process. My God, church is big business, people are telling me. Well, the way that if you do, if you want to do church world, and we will do a church planning course because I get emails. Don't take a salary for the bills from church planners all the time first one to two years leaders if you want your church to grow well if you want you to be able to have buildings and to multiply don't go into church planting and starting a, a church endowment someone gave you guys unless you just had a big in is 1.5 million dollars to start your church both my husband and i do not take anything from our church we are bivocational um and until our church is mature enough and we have grown to where we want it to be we're in our building you do not spend money we have systems then you hire people i mean that's normal business principle until you there's enough money there right so there's uh you cannot go into ministry so that you are an itinerant ministry uh minister and you're you're you want to get paid all over the place this is what i see these young ministers i i've sure i've seen young ministers I heard this story before when i do my ministry 101 course uh, when you ask them to come and minister to you uh, at your pro program, send this whole request that their honorarium is starting at $900 and they need this kind of room and they're flying in this kind of jet and blah, 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 blah. But you do not have any credentials. There's no real fruit to say that you um have been effective in your life and your motives are in the wrong place. And I'll even say this. I'll even say this. I believe giving honor where honor is due. I have an honorarium, but one of the things that we say is meet this honorarium that in our ministry request form is if your budget cannot meet does not mean that we cannot come let us know what you're trying to do and if the lord says yes we will work with whatever you've got because we did not say yes to preaching the gospel to make money so much right now that people i mean it, it frustrates me so you need to have first class seats you need to have thousands of dollars to preach the gospel are you kidding me now i understand that the more time the more you grow the more public you become and so there there's you know you can the less time you have at this is the thing. It's a it's a business rule as well, right? High demand, you can have higher prices. High demand, you can have higher prices. But sometimes when we begin to raise our prices and and and, and focus on the money, it moves us away from the very thing that the Lord has. Called. I do believe in ministers getting paid for us too. So for their work i believe that people should be honored uh but i also see on the other end where it becomes a money-making venture and i'm just wanting to encourage you guys especially the ones that are just starting out that you need to honor and be reverent with the assignment of god on your life God will increase you and people with and as you do that god will open doors for you and god 
bless you. I mean, they've been places where I went and I was expecting maybe $400 offering. And this is the other thing I've seen. People that have a heart of generosity are not always the ones that have all the money that are always very flashy. I've gone to small churches because God told me to gave freely. The gospel go and the people there is free to a certain extent but not really let me I'll, I'll touch on that in a minute but these people had a, a certain they had a level of generosity that they all gave of all they had and their small little church but they gave me a thousand dollars go and you preach and prophesy for hours or this much and it was out of all they had and you have these big big places where you and then they're like, here's $50. It's because they do not understand generosity. One of the things that we push in our church is understanding generosity, understanding having the mind of Christ, that it's not always about what you have, but what happens what has been given to you and has been imparted in you and what you give back. Now, this is what I mean by the gospel is not always free because people always say salvation is free and it, it's not free. Jesus died. He paid a humongous for us to be free and it's a safe humongous price for Thing. When people take their own money and they drive and they come and minister and they pour into you and they bless you and then you don't have a place for them to sleep, that's not good. There is a price that somebody is paying. You don't have anything for them to eat after that. That's not good. And so there right you may be receiving the free end of it that they're giving you a word but we have to keep in mind that every word that is preached every um you know every effort that a person makes that is an evangelist or an itinerant is, is their yeah ministry costs a lot of, they're leaving their family behind the money ministry does cost traveling and getting there and all that and so it is wise and important that you take care of the people that you have that you bring but one of the rules that if we have people and you know we've had to tell people sorry like we can't afford you and that's okay that just means that maybe later down the road or you're just not really part of our our tribe like we you're asking for a little bit too much and we don't flow like that that's not how i was trained in ministry that's not how i view the gospel and as soon as we see something like that we just know that those are not people that we're supposed to partner with so as you're growing and as you're maturing this is the key this is the key the more demand that is on your life, the more you can ask for, right? So when you're first starting out, don't your first speaking engagement, don't have this huge list because you're not gonna get another speaking engagement. This is a business principle as well, all right? When I the business principle as well. I know my, my lip gloss is everywhere. When I first started my business, I used to give free consultations. And the reason I gave the free consultations is because people needed to see the kind of wisdom that I had. I, get, I did free webinars, and I still do that because I believe that uh, business people need to have multiple you. But I did that because I had multiple entry points um, to you. I was getting my business out there. Um, uh, oh, Jonathan uh, says he doesn't go places that offer him an honorarium. Well, yeah, good for Jonathan. Everybody has different levels of um, conviction and different, you know, doing things. And it's important for you. They have different ways of doing, doing to be able to uh, know what the Holy Spirit says. And I absolutely love um, the Ferguson's ministry and uh, I'm well aware of who they are. So anyway, so you offer things for free at first because people need to know who you mean nothing at all but when the demand you are they need to know what you carry they need to know where you're going and that doesn't and comes then you can ask because if you say no if they can't give you anything and you don't have any money to get another person will come along and ask there or you don't have any way to get there then you so don't make these high demands before you've established anybody that wants what you carry you know um 
So someone says, I don't believe in charging. If it's in regards to your business, then yes, that's wonderful. I don't, um, that's wonderful. If that's your conviction, if what that's what the Lord has said, I never said anything about charging uh, to preach the gospel, but I did say that it's cl it's important that you make it clear what you need to preach the gospel effectively in order for you to be effective if those people cannot give you the money or do not have those means that does not mean you shouldn't go that does not mean that you say no your that what people give you should not um uh should not dictate no not at all that's not what i'm saying hate how you do ministry no but there is an order of how to do things if you're going to grow. And this is it. I disciple leaders. I'm a leader of leaders. I have developed lots of ministry people. And this is what in ministry that their house is happens. You have people that are falling apart. Their bills are not paid. And they love Jesus. They're serving God. They're on the phone for four hours mentoring people. They're preaching for six hours. And they go. Them because they're not bringing anything Go home and their wife is irritated with them or their husband is irritated with them into the house and it's the, it's the concept of taking your oil and putting it into a container that will be able to multiply Steward the oil that they care supply itself a lot of people are not wise in how this the oil is the anointing that the Lord has put on your life. Someone said, get a job. Yes, I believe that if you do not have enough ministry opportunities, you need to get a job. You need to be working. However, a lot of people do have a lot of ministry opportunities, but they have not. So they are starving. They have structured their ministry well. And this is, get get this, this is not just about money. If you are emotionally stressed out all the time, if your bills are not being paid, you're not being a good steward of the anointing of God on your life. You're not being effective in what God has called you to do. So this is not just about money. This is some good free stuff, right? I'm giving it you for my periscopes. They're free to y'all for free. I'm not charging. So what I do and how I help develop leaders, I, I was working with one of my men, uh, tees last week. He says, I just believe God has called me to ministry. I've just, I believe I've been called to teach. And he was telling me he wants to get married. I said, baby, you're not ready to get married because you don't have a job. You don't have a job for you because your wife have a job. We need to develop a is going to need a place to live when you're single you can just preach and do ministry and not charge for anything and sleep in the car no problem but if you want to build something of legacy then you need to have some sort of job and if part of if god has called service so for example right into the full-time ministry you need to figure out the things that are books that's something that you're going to charge for because it takes you hours to do the research it takes you hours to develop the outline and it takes your time and energy you can charge for your books if you have cds that you have developed and you have paid for the cds in order to put but it's it and this is what I, your recordings on them charge for that i said earlier there are multiple entry points. If people cannot afford my courses, now I'm going to the business. If people cannot afford my courses, they can watch my periscopes. They can come to my church and we expect you guys to give something in return. Be discipled for free. And now at the church, you're either going to be serving, you're either going to be giving your tithes and your offerings, but that's free. Nobody charges for that right? But if you want me to travel all the way to Alaska and be a blessing to your church and pour into your members and develop them, I have my own members. So what I'm doing is I'm coming out of my comfort zone. I'm coming out of, um, I'm making a big sacrifice. And what you can do in return is make sure that that sacrifice is met with a, a healthy return. That's what I'm saying. So hopefully that was clearly, uh, explained and I hope hopefully 
done this. You need to be able, you guys, I really wanted the young people, young ministers to understand to have clarity on your um, career as well as on your calling, okay? Um, so that's it. Yeah, things, all my psychological stuff, I charge for them because I've got loans that I'm paying back every month. I am not going to coach you and give you strategies that... take my services and this is the cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars for free i'm just not gonna do it and if you don't like that then you don't have to the thing and and i want to encourage all of you guys to do this there's going to be people who are for you they that are called to your assignment to your anointing to what you carry right and so if people don't want what you carry if people uh not your people that's not a big deal I are offended by how you structured what you carry then they're just not everybody's gonna celebrate you my classes are so beneficial thank you i love to teach we get tremendous feedbacks from all of the courses that we give and we're getting better and better at, at logistics and how we run stuff because All right, let me take a couple of questions. Should we love to give information? Um, and so your job is to do that. Musicians charge for playing at a service. Let me say this. Your musicians should be your church members. In a perfect world, your musicians should be your church members. And your service that they give back to the church, church members should have a service church they should be doing something to give back to the church now musicians have, do a little bit more than a normal church member in terms of having practice and having to be there sometimes when they don't need to be there or when other people don't uh, have to be there they should be given something for that there should be a compensation at some point for that the problem is people hire musicians for their churches they don't develop musicians out of their church they hire them because they're gifted where they have to pay them because these are they hire them because they can play well and then they feel this burden not sons they're hirelings these are people that you have hired um to 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 make your your church sound great so now you feel this weight and this con um this um not conviction but this burden to have to pay them we are very generous people we're not paying anybody so our musicians that are part of our house that care right now are not paid however our heart is to pay those we are sound and they are our sons my children my natural sons are not going to be like mom i need you to pay me because i swept the floor and i kept the house clean no you say that you're part of my house i shouldn't have to pay you but if you are going and we see the sacrifices over and beyond as my son that you're making as parents there should be a response in pouring into you and when the church has stabilized and it is in, it has enough income then yes put them on a salary because they'll be able to do a better job so that's what i think about musicians now when it comes to if you are invited out and you're invited to go do a worship conference if you're divided to go sing somewhere if you're divided to go do something then it's going to be the same thing you ask are you guys able to pay for my flight there are you guys able to pay for my hotel um is there a love offering if you don't like the word honorarium is there a love offering that's going to come and if they say yes or no that helps you make your decision it also helps you create your budget you can't be like oh i'm not going to ask those questions and i, I and just uh, you know bring my money together and go do it that's when you begin to be frustrated with the gospel you begin to be frustrated with the uh with serving the lord because you begin to feel like a workhorse you feel like you're pouring yourself out and doing all these things for god but you didn't make your expectations clear and that's the other thing if you do not make your expectations clear don't assume that you're going to receive certain things or things are going to be done in a certain way 
Okay, so it's important. Love offering is good. I prefer that. Let me tell you something about money. People that have a hard time asking for money, usually it's connected to a, a confidence issue and it's connected to a value issue. Oftentimes we we undersell ourselves. Now I'm going a little bit more into business because we do not value what we carry. And this is the thing. This is products. This is business. If I feel like, oh, well, let me not ask for for anything then it's probably because I'm saying I don't think that it's right afraid of money and if you're afraid of money your money's never gonna grow money is not a big deal money is really not a big deal but the people that are afraid of money are, are afraid that maybe if they have too much of it or they ask for it then it makes them unholy it makes them not uh, righteous enough right but we scripture says that money answereth all things it says the love of money is evil but money answereth all things so when when someone Someone has the love of money it, it means that their motivation is because of money but and why they do everything that they do when you understand that money is valuable and that the kingdom of God actually runs on money, then you're not going to be afraid to say, this is what I need in order for me to serve you well. This is what I need. And I'm, I'm not saying extra excess. I need, you know, $5,000 and fur coats and all. No, 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 no. I'm talking about this is what I, I need in order to serve you well so that my family is, is okay when I get back home. Right? So you want to deal with your heart issues. Scripture says that where your treasure is, there also will be your heart. So if you have treasure issues, it's connected to heart issues. When I got over that, I remembered, oh, when I started mentoring, I would just meet with people for hours. I wouldn't charge anything. I just didn't think that was right. But my virtue and my oil was coming nothing was being paid. No. Now, and I was drained and God has given me a virtue. God has given me wisdom. He's given me a gift. Let me package it in a way that people can access it in an affordable way where my life is um is healthy. My life is growing. And that's what that looks like. Growing so that I can keep doing this long term. Like, and so you want to deal with that, especially for you guys that have products. I'll teach on this on the free webinar on Tuesday night about pricing and all that stuff. But you want to deal with your heart. How do you balance your serving in churches? Sometimes what's being asked is like, um, ask me that again. Yeah, that's a good question. So, and, <clears throat> but this is. We planted our church. Um, my business took off. My husband landed an amazing job, um, but he works a lot of hours. Not a lot of hours, but he works weird hours. So what happened was uh, we're working now. We're working on our business. We're working uh, on his job, and, and we're growing the church. The more demanding the church becomes, the less. So, for example, I'll probably stop mentoring people uh, by this summer because I, I need to develop my church. But what that also means is that my church, in turn, is going to have to start paying me because there's no continue to develop outside no way that I can and develop inside and and so you have to use wisdom about when to begin to switch things up yes my husband is an awesome teacher good he is he's, I feel like he's better than me my husband has full he has nuggets and he has revelation he's, he's great but anyway so how we balance it is this we understand the things that we're trying to build as a family we understand where we're trying to go financially and we don't view our church as just church we view it as our family we, we, we view the people that we're developing as our spiritual children and so we are trying we when we make decisions and thank god we have some my he knows how to grow money and uh we her husband is brilliant at finances have a great financial team when we make decisions about our church we're making them in 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 light of of the whole big picture so i don't know if that's what you were asking um 
but we, I strike a balance. So for my church right now, because I'm not hired by them, I can only meet with people certain hours during the week. Um, I don't have all these hours to have coffee and disciple people like I would love to if I was hired by them, but I will have those. Um, so we, we, you just have to see where you're going and what's happening. But I, I schedule, I have three groups of people. I have my clients for work. I have my mentees and I have my church members and they're all on my schedule. Someone says, as a member, balance serving in a local church. Sometimes what's being asked is like full-time hours. You have to learn how to say no as a member. You have to learn how to say no, and you need to know your limitations. And this is the other thing. You also need to know your gifts. You need to be able to operate out of your gifts. Um, we have a ministry training on May 13th at Legacy Center, and we're opening price at LegacyCenterChurch.org. Get up to the public. There's a registration for our non-members, but we're going to train you in ministry. And one of the things is learning your gifts and learning how to say no. Um, I mean, the church cannot be taking up all your time and your family's falling apart. Your marriage is falling apart. That's not the kingdom. The church kingdom encompasses your family. This is a small part of the kingdom. The it encompasses your church. It encompasses your other ventures. So you need to be able to say no. And if you have a people pleasing issue, if you have a striving issue, then you may always say yes and it's draining you and you will not be fruitful. We need you to be fruitful. All right. I'll take a couple more questions and I've got to run. Teacher, how can I get some mentoring from you? I'm in London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have a whole mentorship network. There are four other mentors that mentee, uh, that mentor. I was mentioning my mom earlier. Um, so in June, we're going to open up our mentoring network as well. By then, we'll actually have added some other mentors because my um, we have the program starting May 4th for those that want to be licensed coaches and mentors. Once you go through that and you're certified, you can be part of our mentoring network. Um, you will be able to sign up and register. You have to be interviewed and all that. How do you decipher between gifts? and skills. There are spiritual gifts assessments. Uh, there's prophetic words that can be released over your life. Um, and you have to just get an environment that kind of teaches that stuff and, and helps you. Any other questions? Thank you, Stephen, for putting up my website, AskDrFaith.com. Any other questions? For those that are signing up for the coaching and mentoring certification program, okay, I'm mentoring at a church that I'm not a member of, and I feel like I'm not poured into what to do. You're mentoring at a church you're not a member of. Do you have, if you have a church, what of a church um, are you mentoring at that church? Are you mentoring members? Are you mentoring leaders? Um, if you feel like you're not being poured into, then you need to be in a church so that you can be mentoring children or poured into. Mentoring a um, Okay, um, and so what does that look like? Are you their pastor? When well, mentoring guys has to do with sessions. Mentoring, there it can be informal sessions, but you meet for an hour, you meet for two hours. Doing a specific skill, and your boys, you meet for thirty minutes, and you're doing pouring it into people. That's what mentoring looks like. Um, will you do a talk on women in ministry? Sure, at some point I will. Um, so if you are a children's pastor, you're not necessarily mentoring. So I would need to know what that looks like. I need a prophetic teaching. I missed that. Did you begin to charge? Did people back away from, back, uh, back away from you once you from you went No, because they, they realize the value that I carry. When people understand the value that you carry, a matter of fact, like now, I mean, we have so many clients, we're backlogged. I know some of you guys have, have emailed us um, and, and we're going to get get to it. But no, when people va understand, and this is the other thing, people are afraid to charge because they feel like they're not going to have clients. No, what's going to happen is that people are going to understand that you have value. When you structure your um, business, when you structure your time, they'll understand that your time is important. Okay, what happens when you're saying no to things in church because your husband doesn't want you to? Well, you need to work on your marriage. You need to figure out what he wants um, you to say yes to and why, and then go from there. The prophetic training, we will have the, the School of the Prophets in August. It is. We're also going to have a, a live streaming 
to Raleigh if you can because we're option but I would encourage you guys to get we're going to be doing healing, deliverance. We're going to be activating your gifts. We're going to be—it's going to be a community of prophets for three days. So you need to immerse yourself in that, and you will be able to. In three days, you will learn things that you'd have learned in thirty years, um, and that's what happens. So the prophetic training from London—I'll be in London next April. Um, but um, you can take any courses, anything that I do um, online. Okay, be my psychology teacher. I want to be a psychologist. <laughs> uh, you can take some of our courses. We do have some integration courses on psychology. And you can register for those when that opens up. Faith that I do once a year. You Bless you guys. Bless you guys. Um, discerning what school to attend. Yeah, there's a lot going on now. You know, everybody's there so you want to use things like your teaching there's a lot of material look at your finances um look at the, how you connect with whoever is teaching what where you feel most alive what speaks most to your baby and all that do you have a website i have several websites my business website is askdrfaith.com doctor is spelled out there it is thank you Stephen. our church website is legacycenterchurch.org and you can register we have several things coming up for that um and for those that are in raleigh and north carolina and virginia we'll have our pastor uh dr matthew Matthew Stevenson will be with us, Matthew, uh, on Matthew, on May 18th. So you can get that information. All right. When are you coming to Atlanta? At LegacyCenterChurch.org. Anna, that is not on my schedule. Hopefully soon. You're ready for the singles conference? Awesome. It's going to be great. You can still register at AskDrFaith.com and the courses. Um, what if your husband was doing spiritual things before? He may have been doing it to win your love or marriage, then immediately stopped. Uh, what, what would you add? Looking into moving to a new ministry and knowing when it's time. All right. He may have been doing it to win your li love. There might be other things that are going on. He may be struggling with something, a God issue. You need to figure out what's on his heart, what's going on, and then deal with that. Don't focus so much on serving. And this is important, guys. Don't focus so much on serving and doing, and you haven't mastered being. You haven't mastered just being who you are in the Lord. Uh, what are the times for the conference this weekend? Okay, I'm speaking at two things this weekend. So Friday night, I speak in Virginia Beach. Um... You can find my itinerary. We've posted it on Instagram and Facebook. And then Saturday morning, I'm speaking on the uh, webinar conference, um, online conference. All right. Um, someone had asked a question. I missed it. I apologize. Um, oh, how do you master being? That's one of my favorite things to teach on. You have to master being a son, right? So when my children, they don't have to perform for me to love them right they come home and they can just be sitting there and my heart is like oh jesus i love you so i, I love these babies so much that's how god feels about you we'll do a periscope on this orphan spirit but if you have an orphan spirit and i'll one of the things is performance driven so you feel like you have to serve you feel like you have to do something in order for god to love you and for god to be proud of you so one of the things that you have to master is um sonship and um spiritual slavery to sonship a, a great book um embracing the father's heart or from by jack frost where in virginia beach at um it's the holiday inn on the uh ocean front i i set out i'm sorry guys i wish i had my graphic in front of me i have a graphic that i've posted on my facebook and i'll post it on my ask dr faith um facebook so that you can see all my speaking engagements and where it is yes it is uh live when you are in leadership how do you know when it's time to move there you go into a new ministry so you need to ask yourself, what do I need from the Lord right now? What do I need to grow? What do I need to mature? What are the things that I'm, I'm looking for? So if you need to be taught, if you need to um, be in community, if you need to be uh, just be poured in and you need to sit, you need to have clarity. This is the thing. People want to move somewhere, but they don't know what they're looking for. They don't know what they need. So you need to have clarity about what you need. Once you, It doesn't matter if you're in leadership or not. Clarity about that you need to ask yourself can I get it in this ministry or not if the answer is no then you need to say okay Holy Spirit when is it time for me to move forward 
not if you are not growing if you're not being challenged if you're not being developed um if you and this is the thing and i always like to put this in there because your church may be doing it but if you have offense if you have anger if you have bitterness if you have inner healing issues you won't see it so you always be looking for something else but if you know i'm fine it's really not me but there other people are saying you know there's no growth here there's no development there's no training guys you don't you don't you're not glued we would love for you to be at the same food to a church as pastors church forever we love for you to stay with us forever but there are seasons sometimes when god calls you a, a little bit higher and he wants to develop you in certain areas and 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 he calls you to move and he calls you to shift one of the ways that you know it's time to move or shift is that you're drained all the time is that you're agitated all the time is that you have no joy in, in serving is that you're highly critical and highly judgmental those are clues that you have nothing to bring there if you start being offensive you either need to go get healing so you can serve well or you need to get out of there and find fruitful there's no perfect ministry and another place where you can be more but there are ministries that are designed specifically for you to propel you to where God has for you all right, I've taught you guys for a really long time today because I had an hour. Um, oneness of God and Trinity. I'll do I miss that. Um, do theology stuff at some other point. What, what areas will you be mentoring in? Family, business, ministry. So if you are, uh, if you get into our mentorship program, our Destiny mentoring program is to. Uh, sharpening your ministry and launching you mentor you in your destiny so we're looking at identifying your gifts identifying your purpose we're looking at you uh, out um we don't do inner healing stuff that you go through my business um but in developing you in your calling and your assignment we deal with uh family and all that if you need specifically business um all right it's coaching you go through my business Bless you guys. Bye-bye. Talk to you soon.